Well, on Sunday, the world marked five decades since the first moon landing. And now another country is hoping to add an important chapter to space history. India's space and research organization is gearing up to launch the country's second lunar mission. For more, Neha Punia joins us now live from New Delhi. Hi, Neha. So on July 15th, engineers were not 100 percent sure about all the technological readiness of the launch. They delayed it. Now they say they are absolutely sure it's ready to go. So tell us what we're expecting in just the next few minutes. That's right. We're just minutes away, Andrea, from that uh, crucial launch. It was called off seven days ago because of a pressure leak in the launch vehicle, the GSLV Mark III, which is the biggest, most powerful launch rocket that India has in its space arsenal. Uh, there were some dry runs conducted on Saturday, and the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, says it is ready. There will be no technical glitches this time around. And we have crossed that psychological mark of 56 minutes. That's when last week's mission was called off. So all systems are go now. And what we're going to see now is the GSLV Mark III takeoff with the orbiter, lander and rover in it. And the launch uh, will uh, only be the beginning of what's going to be a two month long mission. Uh, the Chandrayaan 2 or Moon Vehicle 2 is only going to land on Moon's surface on the 6th of September. Um, there were concerns that, uh, you know, because of the delay of a week that India would possibly miss that uh, September 6 deadline. We are speaking of uh, a space mission, so everything has to be absolutely precise, uh, which is why ISRO scientists have altered the path of the orbiter. It's going to uh, orbit the Earth for six extra days and orbit the, moon's, uh, uh, orbit the moon for about 10 days less. And uh, ISRO says it's completely confident that, uh, uh, that landing okay. on the moon's southern pole is in Fact, Neha, I'm going to I'm going to cut you off there. We've got five seconds to lift off. Let's let's watch this happen live. Zero. Plus five seconds. Two minutes are left. 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 Two minutes just saw the moment of truth, if I can call it that. It looks like uh, liftoff has been successful, secure. Uh, we can see some of the engineers and scientists there uh, at ground control. They, they look like it's, it's a go. I mean, everything looks like it's fine, and we're, I imagine we're going to see the, uh, the rocket there just disappear soon into the, the atmosphere as it reaches the outer layers. Uh, of the Earth's atmosphere there and gets into the realm of space. So Niha, I mean, tell us just how historic is this moment now for India? The tension, Andrea, I can tell you, was very, very palpable right before the launch. We saw that aborted launch last week, and uh, everyone had their fingers crossed, hoping that uh, uh, all systems would be go. And the challenge was even more stark this time around, because last time, last week, the launch window was about 16 minutes. Today, on July 22nd, the launch window was only one minute. So the margins for error were absolutely nil. And what we're seeing here is uh, an important footnote in space history, in mankind's space ambitions, because uh, we've seen only three previous soft landings executed by three countries. That's... Um, the United States, China, and Russia. Uh, India did send a moon mission uh, 10, uh, 10 years ago, but that one didn't land on the moon. It simply crash landed near the South Pole, and that's how the world uh, had a confirmation that there was, in fact, frozen ice on the moon's surface. This time, India wanting to take that one step forward. It is going to attempt a control landing uh, on the moon's surface and enter an elite group of nations who have the uh, technology and the capability to do that and also target the uh, southern pole of the moon. This is where scientists believe there is a vast quantity 
quantities of frozen ice or frozen water and the idea is to discover what that quantity is like, how usable this is and how mankind can use it perhaps for crude mission, for colonization of the moon and also perhaps making moon the staging area for carrying out deep space explorations in the future. And Niha, as you said, I mean, India has joined an elite list of only four countries now on the planet uh, that have been able to launch these types of space missions. I mean, how big is India's space program really and how much does it have public support given there is a very high poverty rate in the country? Do people believe this money should be going to a space program, an elite space program like this, or should it be better geared towards perhaps schools or social programs that are needed uh, for the majority of India's poor here? Opinion on that particular aspect is completely mixed. There is uh, a large number of people who feel that perhaps that money could be better utilized in alleviating poverty, in providing better access to social facilities for uh, India's millions of poor. Uh, but there are a lot of other people as well who associate this as, uh, as a moment of pride. Uh, like I said, not many countries have the technology to do this, but India has, and at a fraction of a cost of what other countries have. For example, NASA's moon mission uh, uh, cost uh, 10 times more than this Chandrayaan-2 mission does. Uh, a popular fact that's doing the rounds is, the, uh, is this, that Chandrayaan-2 costs less than uh, the Hollywood film Interstellar. It was uh, uh, cheaper than the latest Avengers movie as well. So India uh, is not spending as much money as, let's say, other countries like the US, China and Russia, but still being able to pull off what these uh, developed countries are doing. And um, that's really also the sentiment on the ground that uh, India is uh, considered as a developing country by many, but uh, when it comes to its space ambitions, it's right up there in that elite group. Um, as far as India's space mission is concerned, many experts will tell you India is not spending enough on its space ambitions. And the kind of technology we're seeing here could be uh, implemented for other things as well. For example, putting up satellites that could help uh, monitor weather patterns better, uh, could help uh, connect millions of people uh, in the country as far as digital technology is concerned uh, and India's space ambitions don't end here. It plans to send astronauts into space by 2022 and it's also going to be setting up a space station in the next decade. So clearly for India, the moon is not the limit. Okay, Niha, thank you so much for that. We greatly appreciate it. Live from New Delhi. Historic moment there for India. It's India's most ambitious mission to the moon yet. Delayed by a week due to technical issues, the unmanned Chandrayaan-2 spacecraft blasted off from southern India on Monday. Today is a historical day for space and science and technology in India. China, Russia and the United States are the only nations to have made it to the moon. But India wants to explore uncharted territory, the South Pole, where they believe water exists in the form of ice. Once it gets there, Trandrayaan 2, whose name means moon vehicle in Sanskrit, will explore craters that could reveal fossilized information about the early solar system. On the ground, the excitement is palpable. We've been waiting for this launch for like a long time, but then it got delayed. So like, uh, I, I take it like we're fortunate that it got delayed, so we're able to see this time. The project has cost 146 million US dollars, which India hopes will cement its position as the leading low-cost space power. It'll take about 47 days for the spacecraft to arrive at its destination and a little longer before we find out if India has discovered something about the moon no one else has before. India has achieved liftoff for its mission to the moon. Three, two, one, zero. Just a few hours ago, the spacecraft at Chandrayaan-2 left its base in Sri Hari Kota off India's southern coast. It's the second attempt after a fuel leak forced the launch to be aborted last week. The rocket, which is made up of an orbiter, a lander and a rover, will take about two months to travel to the moon. If the landing is a success, India will become just the fourth country to land on the moon after Russia, the US and China. For more, we're joined by Niha Punia, live from New Delhi. And Niha, India's moon rocket will be traveling to places previously unknown. 
That's right. Uh, the Indian Space Agency, ISRO, is targeting the southern pole of the moon. Uh, interestingly, in 2008, when the first moon mission was launched by India, its uh, um, orbiter didn't land on the moon, but it did crash land quite close to the landing site that uh, ISRO has identified this time around. And that mission is how the world was given a confirmation that there is, in fact, frozen water on the moon's surface. Uh, and uh, to build on that finding is why ISRO has picked the southern uh, pole of the moon as well. Of course, the fact that uh, it's untouched, it, it's unexplored, and uh, this mission will give India a chance to go down uh, in history as the first country to land there is also a big reason. Uh, but uh, the Indian Space Agency says that its main aim, of course, is to try and uh, uh, understand to what extent is what I is found on the moon's uh, uh, south pole how usable is this water and there will also they're saying be a study conducted of the craters which possibly hold a history of our solar system Neha compared to other space powers India's space ambitions they're famously low cost That's right. We've seen three other countries uh, carry out successful lunar expeditions. That's Russia, China, and the United States. And all of their missions have cost anywhere between $8 billion to about $100 million. That's how much uh, NASA's last mission cost. And uh, this specific mission, Chandrayaan-2, has cost India only $150 million, so a fraction of the cost of the global uh, space programs we are seeing rolled out. And the reason for that is that uh, everything that India has used in this mission, everything has been designed in-house, everything has been built indigenously, uh, which has uh, given India the reputation of being the center for low-cost space technology. And India is hoping to build on that. It's being speaking of commercialization of its space arm, uh, its reputation as a successful launch pad for many of uh, other missions by NASA, uh, China, Russia is well known. It wants to take this technology forward and be a part of the conversation where uh, people are talking about uh, colonizing the, uh, the moon uh, and also possibly using it as a staging area to carry out further deep space explorations. Well, thanks very much, Nea Punya, speaking to us from New Delhi. And um, that uh, rocket is expected to land in the moon sometime in early September.